Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are doing a slightly different podcast, I guess. Uh, like everything right now, we're doing a Zoom meeting. This was supposed to be a face-to-face. -face. We were supposed to get together and do this in person like the rest of the world. Uh, we are all self-isolating as we should be. If you are not, shame on you. Uh, so my guest today is Alfred Zeglul. Um, you may know him as Alfred Drinking Coffee, although I think right now, due to the, uh, yeah, exactly, due to the <laughs> quarantine, is it just Alfred making coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it's Alfred drinking, Alfred making. It's just, it's a whole mess right now. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. So let's, let's start there. Like, what is, like, you're somebody that's used to a lot of variety in coffee right now. Like, yeah. well, like what, what are you doing to get through this? So, okay. So I've been, I've been drinking coffee and doing this, like, Alfred drinking coffee thing for, like, over three years now, right? So... Yeah. I've been getting bags of coffee sent to me for those three, say two and a half years. I have enough coffee to survive for the next six months. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Like I was thinking like if, if this was like the zombie apocalypse, I could survive at home with coffee for six months. I'm good to go. <laughs> right. or that, that was my main concern. Is that, is that, <laughs> that was a genuine concern for me? Yeah. So okay, can I uh, can I uh, can I put you on the spot and uh, what are you yeah. drinking and give us give us a review? So right now I'm drinking um, I'm drinking this uh, El Diamante from uh, from Monogram. Okay. Um, I actually just got this the day before I went into self isolation, yeah. um, and I'm trying to preserve it. But basically, the coffee is uh, it it has like a little bit of apple notes, like red apple notes. Wow. and a little bit of uh, cinnamon in there. Uh, um, and it, like I found with Monogram stuff uh, that if they say like, this is the note that you're gonna taste, you're gonna just taste that. Like it's not even coffee at this point, you're basically drinking juice. <laughs> like, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. so um, love their stuff. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to like use it very sparingly <laughs> to survive through. Uh, but I figured for, for this talk, for this podcast, I might as well make a good cup of coffee, you know? Okay. Well, so I'm not so lucky. So I've got this little espresso. Hey, Nespresso, Nespresso works, man. Nespresso gets you through the day. It's, it's good it, stuff. It does, but I really want a cup of coffee. But here's the thing. So I'm hinting, I'm, I'm sensing hints of I'm out of cream <laughs> and uh, a slight note of I had no choice. <laughs> satisfying so how did i do <laughs> uh, that that was pretty good honestly sometimes that's that's the review uh, yeah, yeah. it was yeah it's crazy so you actually kind of alluded to it so like where did you get your start on social media like how did this all come to be how did alfred drinking coffee come to be so for me i've always like i've always been into coffee right like um i'd say my first job was working my first like corporate accounting job was working at Blend's Coffee Head Office. Um, and I kind of just like worked out there and I started like, we had an espresso bar in the kitchen. So anytime you wanted coffee, you just go make some coffee and, and uh, get back to work basically. And then that led to me going to different coffee shops in Vancouver. So like Revolver was a big thing at the time. So I was going to Revolver a lot. Um, and I was going to Timber Train and just trying out different coffees here and there. And then, I got my job at Daily Hive, um, which was Density Buzz at the time. Um, and the owner, like one of the owners, he's the CEO, Karm Sumal. He is not a coffee drinker whatsoever. Like he's tea through and through. And you were and wow. Yeah, right. But mistakes were made. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Great guy other than the coffee thing. Uh, <laughs> um, and he didn't really care too much because we were a startup he didn't care too much about getting a coffee machine in the office and people love to go out and buy coffee or whatever so i anytime i needed a coffee i'd go walk to a coffee shop go grab a coffee from like a local area there but i'd like to try something new every time and then two of my coworkers, like maybe three months into working there um kaylee dimmick and alexandra best sherwood sherwood now because she got married um we uh they both were just like you should start an instagram page about your coffee and at first i'm like no no one's gonna want to see this face every day uh <laughs> um but then it led to it really led to us throwing around ideas and i'm like okay if 
if I'm going to do this, I need to be very against the grain. I, like everyone on Instagram, especially guys were like, they were basically fitness models on Instagram at the time. Right. So anyone that was like doing something was jacked. And I'm like, I was not. And at the time, if you, if you were following like yeah. back then, right. It's a struggle. But if you were following back then, I was like a hundred pounds heavier. Like I was not a model in any, any form of the word. I'm not now, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, so we were throwing around these ideas and I'm like, how about we make this into like, I'm a boring accountant drinking coffee and reviewing coffee. Right. Um, and at first we were going to do like gray shirts every day and basically the same picture every day. Just make it like super mundane. Exactly. Like be the most boring person ever, but re reviewing coffee. Um, and then we're like, you know what, maybe like, maybe we'll throw in some color here and there. Um, in all honesty, my mindset was because they started saying like, um, uh, let's get shirts and line them up in threes. Cause that's Instagram like model. Yeah. And then when people are scrolling, they can scroll through and see a rainbow and like add color and sorry. And stuff like that in my head, I'm like, sure we could do it, but like, I'm not going to make it to a point where people could scroll. Like this is going to be funny for like a week and then we're going to stop doing so you're it. You're thinking, yeah, this is like a one week. Everyone will have a good laugh kind of thing. Yeah. So mainly, mainly like five people in the office are going to find this funny and then it's over. So um, that leads me to two questions then actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, first one, um, actually I'll, I'll start, I'll start, I'll reverse them actually. So yeah, you went into it with this mindset of like, I'm going to just try this for a week. Mm -hmm. What was the indicator that was like, uh Oh, we might have something here. Well, so, so what ended up happening is within the first, the first picture, the first uh, Instagram post that I did was a review of JJ beans coffee okay. and they commented on the post. And I like, at the time I'm like, Oh my yeah, God, JJ okay, bean is like, are listening. yeah. Like what is happening? And they're like, this is amazing. We want a hundred more posts. Like we want to see this happen. And I remember, I remember this vividly. I saw that Instagram post. I dropped what I was doing at work and I ran up to Kaylee and Alex and I'm like, look at what just happened. And, and they're just like, okay. Like, and they're dealing with like Ben City Buzz's Instagram, right? <laughs> so they're like, okay, cool, whatever. And I'm just like, no, like guys, I don't know how to respond to this. And I'm just like, I was freaking out. And then, and then a week went by and we decided to like, we started to post a little bit more. And then I did that like basic uh, PSL picture, like the pumpkin spice oh, latte picture. Oh, my, my favorite one. And we're going to, we'll link it up here. So everyone can see okay. it. <laughs> and okay. it just blew up there. Like a after that post, people were like, this is amazing. And I went from like 20 followers to like 500 with that one picture. Now was that the original one with the oversized scarf? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. 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 Love and then we're like, okay, like, again, Alex at the time was just like, okay, next year we have to make this bigger. I'm like, what are you talking about next year? Like, this is not going to be like a yearly thing. <laughs> we're not going to make it a year. Um, and slowly people started to like reach out a little bit more and people started to like message me and be like, hey, we want you to review our coffee. Um, and this was like the first person was, uh, they were, uh, what was it? It was not drift. It was it was a coffee company out in, uh, out in California. I don't remember the name right now. You're like, they're, uh, they're no longer local. Like this is. Yeah. Yeah. And it was not, I'm like, why do you want me? Like just some random dude in Vancouver to review your, your coffee. Um, and then they sent me like a mug. They sent me a bag of coffee and it, it just had a trickle effect at that point. Right. Um, and that, then once we had. That actually leads me to my next question because mm -hmm. then you suddenly had a problem on your hand because I followed your grid the whole time. So what exactly is the process of going to get the exact same t-shirt in every color in the rainbow? <laughs> so this is what I did. So I actually bought all these shirts um, all at once okay. on uh, Jericho. Nice. Like they're a Canadian, they're a Canadian brand. And like, they like, it's a, I'm not going to say it's like more expensive than like those, those like, um, you didn't like whatever, like TV like, and pay like four fifty a shirt type thing. Yeah, basically, right. Um, so I bought these shirts, and we literally like went through the colors that they had, and I bought a shirt in every one of those colors. Nice, right? Um, and they all shipped together, and then we just went through it that way, right? Um, 
So it was, it was interesting to think that like, this is going to be a thing. Right. Yeah. So you mentioned that you get coffee cups, which is something I've always wondered, like how many coffee cups do you own now? And like, how are, like, like your parent, like you, you did mention you, you look like, yeah, there's no cupboard space. So like how you do this. <laughs> so, so here's the thing is like cupboard, cupboard space is over. Like I remember maybe like a month ago, cause my mom drinks as much coffee as I do. Right. Okay. And like anytime, anytime I, I make a good cup of coffee, I bring it back home. Like I have coffee at work and then coffee at home. Right. And I'll bring some at home and she's just like, okay, like this is great. But then I start bringing mugs home and I bring like a pour over home that was sent to me or, or a French press or whatever. And she's like, okay, no, we don't have any more space. This is <laughs> not working anymore. <laughs> like none of this is okay. Stop. And I'm just like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, this is, this is your life now. Yeah. You have to accept this. <laughs> great coffee comes great responsibility. Right. <laughs> I am the Spider-Man of coffee. <laughs> So, so uh, with, with that, so like obviously mm-hmm. mugs, you're talking about you got French presses and everything else. Mm-hmm. I recently saw a deal with Nespresso, which is crazy. Like, so talk to me about brand deals. Are you, are you getting opportunities that you maybe, you, you clearly, when you started, you didn't see this coming. So no, not at, not at all. I'm get, look, man, I, at the end of the day, I'm an idiot that drinks coffee and people listen to me. I don't understand why, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but it's, it's nuts. Like it started off with like, obviously like local shops here and there. I even did like when, when this happened, uh, it, it was nuts is that like I made a roast with JJ Bean. Um, cause I had met, um, the head roaster there and we made like a small time roast and whatever. And I'm like, I have a bag of coffee with my face on it. Like this is nuts. And then it's just like, it's mind boggling. And then Starbucks reached out, like Starbucks Canada reached out to work with me. Right. Yeah. And then Nespresso reached out. They're like, okay, like this is, this is awesome. To be honest, Nespresso happened because a friend of mine was like, okay, I work with Nespresso um, on the, on the um, like influencer side. I'll, I'll link you together, make this happen. And literally two days later, like I get an email. They're like, we want to send you, we love your page. We want to send you an espresso. We want to send you pods. And they sent me like 300 pods. Like this is, I look, <laughs> I'm still going through them right now. Um, but these yeah, brand deals. I hear you. That's the only thing getting us through the pandemic. Like I think I've posted before mm. they have that deal where you get a, you get a, what are they? Virtual plus or whatever. Yeah. Virtual plus for $69 mm-hmm. if you buy 450 pots. So yeah. I'm, I'm giving these stupid things away as Christmas presents because I want all the coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is brilliant so people think i'm like crazy baller but i'm like nah, i've spent 70 bucks but if you think i bought you a 400 dollars machine props. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine if that's what you want to think i'm not going to convince you otherwise it's fine yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know brendan now who's who's moderating this is like where the hell's my coffee machine <laughs> <laughs> he'll get you one brendan so just be patient <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. So your social account then, like, obviously it's been going for a while now. It's been huge success. Like, mm-hmm. and especially in Vancouver, Vancouver is obviously, I could see how something like this would really go off. Like when you're out in public now, are you getting reactions? Like, are people like noticing you and like, like, what's that like? Every, every once in a while, like I'll be walking down the street and someone will, like say hi or whatever. Um, Sometimes I know them, like, sometimes I know the person, sometimes I don't, right? I have no idea who the person is, but it threw me up. Like, this is, this, like, this happened maybe, like, two, three months ago where I was walking down the street with one of my coworkers, and this guy across the street was just staring at me, like, <laughs> locked eyes staring at me. Super nice. And I'm just, like, I'm, like, what the hell is going on? Like, what, what is this? Why, why is he look? And I look back. I look away to talk to my coworker. And then I look back and the guy's still staring at me. And I'm just like, what is your problem? Like, what is your issue? And then it clicks. I'm like, oh, he might recognize me from Alfred Ricky Coffee. Maybe don't be a jerk. Uh, <laughs> so I like waved at the guy. Rage. You can't have road rage ever again. No, no. I can't, like, I can't, I can't be an angry person in any capacity. Uh, but it's, it's, 
it's those things where like I don't I don't think I'm that big of a deal to be completely honest I think I'm a joke at the end of the day uh but some people like some people are super excited to meet me some people are super excited to talk to me about coffee and like I'll get messages nonstop being like hey like let's go for a coffee let's let's talk about like your thoughts even you and I we we met um and and it was just like hey let's talk about coffee and I'm like sure why not right um and it's just walking down the street something I'm not gonna say it like happens every day but like maybe once a month I'll be walking down in like downtown Vancouver and I get stopped or I'll go to a coffee shop and they're like oh you're you're that guy that reviews coffee um and usually they like it's not even Alfred drinking coffee they're like you're Alfred drinks coffee right or like Alfred coffee right and I'm like yeah, 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 I'm out for drinking coffee. Like that's that that's it, right? Uh, and they're like, uh, you know what? Like baristas then, because it reminds me of those television shows where like the restaurateur sees the food critic come in. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of stress on this. <laughs> I stress them out all the time. <laughs> no, like some like some some baristas are like, oh yeah, yeah, we got like we got you. We'll make you a good cup of coffee. And like usually, what I try to do if I'm like re- reviewing a new coffee shop or something like that. I, I leave it up to them, right? Like, I won't be like, I want this. I'll be like, what do you got? What do you got? What is, what's good? Go for it, right? And sometimes they recognize me like, we, we got you. And I'm just like, okay, sure. And I trust it. And it turns out amazing, right? I uh, hope uh, the reputation's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was just the worst cup of coffee. No. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, and to be honest, like, I'm I'm never going to, like, this is, a side note but like i'm i'm the kind of guy that like i don't like if you if you follow like religiously on my page you'll never find a bad review you'll never find like an exuberantly great review but like um i try to not give any bad reviews because at the end of the day this is the livelihood of people right so i'm i'm not going to rip someone's coffee apart and be like this is horrible but if i don't like it it's not going on the page at the end of the day you and I talked about that the first time we met, actually. That was one of the <clears throat> that was one of the initial character traits that really drew me to you after our meeting was, yeah, like you can still have a negative opinion, but you you identified that this is somebody's livelihood. So yeah. your alternative was, um, you know, just to not post it at all, which I thought was yeah. super cool. So you're walking into these places. You're you're literally the uh, you are you are the godfather of coffee. <laughs> But sometimes that that might be a bad thing. Do you ever feel like you're do you ever feel like you're typecast or do you ever get like an urge to like break the pattern? All the time. All the time. Like there's there's days where I'm just like I'll be I'll be taking the pictures with Alex at work and I'm just like is this my life? Like, is this what I'm going to have to do for the rest of my life? Can we change this? <laughs> so how long, you, how long do you plan to keep it up for? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, it's going to be like, until it gets really boring. Like even now we were doing like uh, the self-isolation post and I'm like rocking a onesie and people are loving it. And I'm just like, it's literally the same thing, but I'm wearing something different. Like that's, that's the only thing. And I think the reality is I'll probably keep this up for a while. Like I, I have no, I have no issue with it. It's, pretty easy to be honest um, uh, like I'll keep it up because it's like it's entertaining to me and it's funny because like whenever people meet me in public um, they're expecting this like mundane like boring dude that never smiles right and they don't recognize me until I stop smiling yeah right so um, so it throws people off so like meeting people or like being on camera or like whatever it is yeah. you find that it throws people off from what people expect me to be. So that in and of itself is a little bit different for me. Did you have to practice that stoic face? Oh no, I just think of like the most, dep- I think about my life to be completely honest and it just like. <laughs> I'm like, is this what I've become? And then I just shut down like that. <laughs> you touched on something super important though. And like, obviously with, um, with my content, uh, obviously I go from the motivational route and I get a lot, I get a lot of, uh, young people or people just starting out being like, how do I find my passion? How do I, how do I pick, uh, how do I pick what's going to blow up on Instagram? Mm-hmm. The most common thing I get, how do, how do I, how do I decide what's going to blow up? And you touched on something super important that so many people miss. You didn't plan on being the coffee guy. No, it was an interest of yours. 
and you just went all in on it. Yeah. And I've, like, I, I, so um, I, I volunteer at, at my church with like the youth group, right? Like these are like 16 to like 20 year olds. Right. And Influential. that, and their, their, their age group is like, I want to be famous on YouTube or TikTok or whatever it is. And I'm like, that shouldn't be the goal to be famous shouldn't be the goal because at the end of the day you're just doing it to get the hit right um for me i don't care like if i get two likes versus like 600 yeah. it doesn't matter but that's the difference that so many people don't realize it's like if you just you need to enjoy what you do and it needs to be an authentic passion or you won't ever get the longevity because everyone everyone forgets patience mm -hmm. like everyone forgets patience and it's impossible to be patient with something like this if it's not in your DNA and you're forcing it. Right? Yeah. So and you're not, you do it for yourself anyways. Um, and that's the secret. So we'll, so for the young people watching that are like trying to figure out what to blow up, what would be the number one piece of advice you would give them? Just honestly, just find your passion and do it. Like if you really love what you're doing, if you enjoy what you're doing, people will notice. I find that if you're, if you're doing something just for other people, it, it, it's apparent, like you can tell if people are trying to do something to just please other people. If you are passionate about what you're talking about, like as an example for myself, like I'll be talking to someone and someone will ask me about coffee and I can talk for hours about coffee, right? And at the end they're like, I understood maybe like 10, 10 minutes of that, but, <laughs> but it seems like you know your stuff. Right, like. Sorry, say, say that again. Well, you're, cause you're thinking about coffee on another level. Like the first time you and I talked like yeah. the most, um, my, my questions during our talk got more and more sophisticated, but it started off in like, so cream milk or <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah. Cause like you think of it on a, on a completely different level. So that's good advice. The moral of the story is like, you, you gotta, you gotta find your passion or it's yeah. just, it's not going to go off. Right. And I feel so bad for, um, I did a, I did my first Instagram live yesterday and what you said kind of resonated with me again, because TikTok has been on my mind a lot. <clears throat> I know everyone is saying that's where the masses are. So you got to get on there and everything else. But ironically, it does the complete opposite where it forces everyone to follow trends that just aren't them. Yeah. All you're doing is you're mass producing these people in the most unauthentic way. Um, and then, and then unfortunately on the other side, having a little girl now, you know, like mm -hmm. you can't scroll through TikTok without seeing a girl that's getting progressively more naked because yep. that's how she's identified her worth and her popularity. Yep. It's just, it's, um, it's not going to last. Right. So like, you've no. got, you got to find your passion and not only that, it feeds your soul, right. When you're actually following something you love, mm -hmm. I got to imagine it feels pretty empty if you're just chasing everyone else's, um, everyone else's urges and, and trends. So talking about loving what you do, I don't think a lot of people realize, like obviously the coffee gig, although you're working with Starbucks, you're working with this, yeah. person, like it's, it's, you're up there, but like, it's not actually what you do for work. So what do you, when you're not being the coffee guy, what do you actually do for a living? So I'm like, I'm actually an accountant. Like I, I, I'm a, I'm the finance manager at Daily Hive. And actually, funny enough, recently uh, in November, I started a consulting business for accounting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, like, that, that was my original passion. Like, business was originally my passion and understanding business and understanding all these things. And accounting just came easy to me. So it just it made sense, right? Um, and obviously, my friends that are in accounting that were with me will say, no, it wasn't easy for you because you're an idiot. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but when it comes down to it, like that, that is who I am. Like I am actually an accountant. So, yeah. um, going through strategy, going through like efficiency analysis and stuff like that, like, um, that is what I do for a living. Very cool. How's the consulting business going? And is that something, <laughs> obviously don't want to throw you under the bus with your employ long term. Is that, the goal? Yeah. is that your retirement plan? We'll say that's the safe way to. I think, like if this is it, honestly I talked to Karma about this um so I'm not like scared to mention this. Okay good. I was okay. just trying to do that. <laughs> but I talked to him about it and I'm just like if I can do both for the rest of my life I'll do both because for me working at Daily Hive isn't just a job. It's not just a career. Like I genuinely love going into work. I genuinely love working with these people and helping the business grow. Like 
even in these dying times, like in these, in these not dying, but like in these struggling times in this pandemic, I'm happy to work 10, 12 hour days if it means that the business will thrive, right? Um, and it's, at the end of the day, I'm not like, it's not like I'm gonna get paid more to work more. Like when you're on salary, you get what you get, right? And you work however much time you put in, right? But I find that if I can do both, forever i'll do both forever right the consulting gig just made sense for me because working at daily hive you spent so much time with people that are like self-made you spend so much time talking to people that like build something from nothing and i've never wanted to just be an employee i've always like had more passions to like build something up to to grow i i'm i hate feeling stagnant right um so with this, if I stayed just as an employee, I'd be like, okay, at a point I'll hit a peak and then I can't pass that, right? Yeah. It's not like all of a sudden they're gonna be like, you know what, here are the keys to Daily Hive, take the business. That's never gonna happen, right? But the consulting is a way to like feed your entrepreneurial spirit though. Exactly, exactly. And, and again, I didn't expect it to take off really right. quickly. Um, I was honestly just talking to uh, one of my friends that, uh, through, that I met through, uh, through after drinking coffee. And I told him like, I'm starting to do this. I'm starting to work on this. And he's like, I want in, like, I want to work. I want you to be my accountant. So, so that started. And then next thing you know, there was a trickle effect. And it's funny that, that this would never happen with any other employer, at least from my recollection, but even Carm started like passing me people that he thought would benefit from having me as an accountant. Nice. Right. In this consulting thing. And he's like, anytime I hear of someone, I'm going to pass you along. Like he genuinely wants me to grow. He genuinely cares about my passions. Right. And, and that also motivates me to care more about daily hive and to care more about him and want him to want him to succeed as well. Right. Cause the more you, yeah, it's like, imagine that if you just, if you just genuinely care for people, they want to care for you. Imagine that. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, right. Crazy concept. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple, but it's so hard to do. You know what I mean? Like, which is so sad, right? Yeah. Like that's uh, it's uh, I rant about it a lot. I don't understand why just because something is business, you have to, you feel you have to treat people differently, right? Like, yeah. It's, uh, it's mind boggling. And then when it's, you see people thrive and everything and you peel back the layers, you're like, Oh cool. No, they just care for each other. And, and that's, it turns out that's reciprocating. Because people yeah. they care for people, they care for them. Like, it, imagine that. For me, like, it's just, it, I've always had this mentality of, like, I'm, I'm doing fine. You know what I mean? Like, um, work-wise, success-wise, I'm doing fine. I'm okay with where I'm at. If, if I were to stop where I'm at right now, I'd be okay for the rest of my life. You right? sell coffee cups for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I'm just, like, I want to use what I have, like, the, the strengths that I have, the, the, the reach that I have to help other people, right? And it's not even for reciprocation. It's not even for whatever. It's just to be able to help the people around me grow. And I know in the back of my head, if they grow, then they'll either bring me with them and I'll grow too. Or as I grow, I can bring people up around me. Because at the end of the day, what's success if you can't share it? Yeah. Right? It reminds me of, have you ever read the book, The Go-Giver? No. No. After this, send me your address. I'll, I'll send you a copy of it. Okay. They, they, uh, they talk about the fact that until you can get to a point to where you just want to genuinely give because there's no agenda, like you just genuinely want to help people, that's what unlocks success. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it sounds so simple, but as you read this book and it kind of takes you on a story, it points out all the things where we get 80% of the way to where we think we're being just completely selfless but in the back of our mind we're like but if i do this this will happen you know yeah. where it's like no you just invest in other people you you nailed it where it's like it always comes back but yeah. so many people focus on like but if i help you how am i going to get mine so mm-hmm. you just go all in on everybody else and you, you summed it up perfectly where it's like you don't even think about it because you just know that that's how the universe works right and yeah. like it's, it's it's goofy that uh, that a lot of people can't wrap their heads around that so accounting then you're looking at numbers all day. yeah and now we're self-isolated is there a huge difference like how are you doing working at home honestly aside from the no- love isn't around you so how <laughs> you- <laughs> I th- 
honestly, I think I'm focusing more on the actual work and not socializing. Uh, <laughs> but realistically, I'm just looking at Excel spreadsheets like all day. I'm looking at numbers all day. Um, I'm on calls and meetings all day. So nothing really has changed other than the location that I'm in. Right. Right. But so mentally you're doing okay. You're like, you're not yes. an interaction or anything. No. So like, this is, this is something I started from the beginning because I'm, I'm like, uh, I consider myself and this is, this might sound weird, but I'm an extroverted introvert. Right. I, I love socializing, but to recharge, I need to like have my alone time. Yeah, um, but being in a situation like this, I knew that if I like, cause they right off the bat were like, this is going to be two weeks minimum, right? You're going to be at home for two weeks minimum. I knew that like being at home, I need to have a good routine. I need to have a positive attitude going into this. Otherwise I'm going to collapse. I'm not going to make it because there are always going to be those hard days. Yeah. Um, so what I tried to do, and I actually wrote an article about this a little while ago, uh, like a few days ago was, um, trying to stay positive in the situation that you're in and try to find the positives. Because if we're constantly looking at the negatives that we're seeing everywhere, like on the news, uh, on any advertising, any like social, like platforms, you just see this COVID-19, it spread, it spread, it spread. The numbers are growing, whatever it is. And like, it is a pandemic, right? But when you try to find these like little positives in the day to day, it, it keeps your spirits up and keeps your mental health up. And I think that's something that like triggered me the first day was like, if I don't keep my mental health up, I'm not going to make it through for however long we're going to be in self-isolation. So is there anything in particular you're doing to make sure you, um, you start your day off, right? It's funny. One of my, one of my next posts, which will already be an old post by the time this airs. Yeah. That was exactly something that I, that I covered in a post day where it's like one pause, uh, one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about, so, so what, is there anything in particular you're doing to make sure that your mind is starting off in the, in the right, at uh, the right pace? So I like, I, to start off my day, I like to like take 10, 15 minutes to while I'm making my coffee to just like process what's going to happen today. But the one underlying positive aspect that I've found is like for the last six months, I've been on the go nonstop. Like I'm in meetings, events, work, um, going to social events, whatever it is. And I haven't like outside of like sleeping at home, I haven't spent any time with my parents. I haven't been able to like, just take a moment to enjoy where I'm at right now. Right. And I've been constantly running to like succeed. So I've found that over the last two weeks, since like I've been at home for 16 days roughly now, um, is that I'm actually getting some quality time with my parents. And I don't know how long I'm gonna have that, right? So, so that's a huge positive for me, being able to like, find these little things like I'm also uh, like talking to people that are in my life that like we all wouldn't get this much time to talk about like we wouldn't be able to talk during this time um, because we're all on the go like a, a lot of my friends are striving for their careers and like growing and stuff like that um, so having that aspect of like we have nothing else to do but to socialize and like and keep each other like happy Right. Um, that's, that's something that like, I'm happy about. Like I'm, I'm, keep, it's keep, keeping me positive and keeping me happy. So just realizing that you have a lot of things to be grateful for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat, right? It's just realizing that, um, I did a post the other day where my, 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 uh, two months, like I, I was basically supposed to miss the, the first couple of months of, uh, Bo growing up, right? Like obviously mm -hmm. seven week old now. And, I'm supposed to be leaving. I think I'm supposed to be leaving for the Bahamas today for like a corporate retreat. And I was going to be on the road for like another month after that. So yeah, it's the same thing. I wake up every morning and yeah, the, the days aren't easy having two kids and being isolated um, with my workload. But at the, at the flip side of that, like you just said, like they're only young ones, like just like your parents, like you don't know, you know, you, you don't know how much more, you never know how much more time you have left, but like these are pivotal little moments that I'm here for. Right. So yeah, yeah, people just got to take the time to realize how fortunate they are. And you touched on something I wanted to ask. I was going to ask, like, what positive things do you think are going to come out 
of this from everyone staying at home. And I think you really kind of nailed it in the best possible way. It's like, hopefully we rekindle relationships that Mm -hmm. it's so funny. Like you get one life and we all focus on, we shut off relationships and we isolate ourselves um, accidentally in a lot of ways in pursuit of a career where the money doesn't end up in your coffin with you, you know? And, And it's funny that everyone now, when all these distractions are being lifted away, we're gravitating to what really matters. Right. Do you think that's going to have a lasting impression or is it like everything else that we see? Like I I look at the Kobe situation, right? Mm -hmm. Kobe, you know, like rest in peace. And it was an unfortunate situation. And of course everyone goes on social media and they're like, that's it from the, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to take life more seriously. I'm not going to take things for granted. And then two weeks later we have, this is something that's impacted everyone, regardless of whether or not you watch sports. What's your take? Do you think, are we going to learn from this? Are we going to, is there going to be major takeaways from this? So this is like, there's, there's a couple things. And I, I try to be a realist in all this stuff. Right. Um, there are aspects that I find like the, the fact that like the communities are getting together and us as a global community are coming together to like take care of each other um, is huge. It's great. But human nature always, comes into play and your nature comes into play right if you are the kind of person that learns from these things if you are the kind of person that that self-reflects and evaluates and like constantly tries to grow as an individual those are the people that are going to adapt and grow from this right right? and they're going to keep this in mind and they're never going to forget about the month two months whatever where we were in self-isolation and couldn't spend time with each other but then there's going to be the other people that are like, okay, I got through this. I'm going to go back to my life. Right. And I don't know if it's going to be a 50, 50 split. I don't know if it's going to be a 70, 30, but the reality is there's going to be some people that really take this to heart and cherish what they have. And then there's going to be others that completely forget about the situation that they're in and try to like bounce back to where they were before. Which is unfortunate, but it just reminds me of like, we all know, we all know a certain senior citizen uh, range that like Mm -hmm. was alive at the end of the war or had Mm -hmm. to live the war and like feast or famine and everything else. And like for the obviously general generalizing here, but for the vast majority, those are scars that have never went away. Right. They're good with their money. They're always saving. They never overindulge. They they stock up things like that. So that's where my, it was like, are we really going to learn or are we, um, yeah, curious to see what, what happens with it. Another thing I'm curious about is how do you think um, how do you think this kind of thing is going to affect people's outlook on social media in general? Because we're now using it as like a survival tool. Do you do you think it's going to affect people's outlook? I think so. I think so. Here's another thing: is like the mental. It's all, at the end of the day, it's all about the mentality that you go into doing anything, right? Um, like you were touching on TikTok, for instance, right? I, I started doing TikToks as a joke for myself to keep myself safe, right? <laughs> um, but I know that a lot of people are using this as a moment to be like, okay, everyone's on social media. Everyone's bored out of their minds. I'm going to try to get big. I'm right. going to try to get famous off of this. Um, and again, it's like we said before, it's the mentality of, I want to do something to, to become famous or doing something for yourself. Right. Um, and it's also the sense of realistically, like social media is always adapting as a whole. It's always going to be adapting. And I think after this, there are going to be those that did get big off of this and won't know what to do once people go back to their normal lives. And they'll basically like trickle back down into, I don't know what to do to get big on social media. That's a really um, good Yeah. Like, are you adding something of value or are you literally just the court jester because everyone's bored? Yeah. Right. And it, there's no, there's no, there's no issue with being a court jester at the time. If that is your goal. Yeah. Right. If you're, if your goal is to add a little bit of like humor and positivity to people's lives throughout this. Amazing. I think, I think that's amazing. I think that's great. Just accept um, it for what it is. And once it's all over, be okay with that. Don't let it define your self-worth, right? Exactly. Exactly. And again, social media as a whole is always adapting. Like every, every couple months, you'll see a new trend. Every couple, every 
year, like from when I started like three plus years ago, it's adapted so much. I've, I haven't changed much in terms of my page, but I know that a lot of my friends that are on social media um, that are influencers, not to use that word because I genuinely hate that term. Uh, <laughs> um, but like all the influencers on there have adapted their, their social media presence because of the platform changes and the mentality changes of the end user. Um, so I think with this, once everything's all said and done, I think social media as a whole is going to change drastically, but it's all dependent on how we adapt. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. Cause the end user defines it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And mm-hmm. it's whether or not we're going to adapt with them. Right. Yeah. I'm going, take, I'm going to take it a different direction because I know you're an accountant. I know you're a business guy. Um, a lot, uh, something I don't talk a lot on my social feeds, but I'm probably going to start doing a little bit more is like, I, I'm a stock guy. Consider mm-hmm. myself a day trader. I'm, I'm heavy in the market at all times. Uh, anyone that works at the office knows it. it there, it's always up on, on a screen kind of thing. Are you playing in the markets at all? Cause there's, there's a, there's a huge opportunity here right now. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? There is, and I like, I ha- I have my investments already, right? Like I have, I had investments that completely tanked right when this started. Um, and all the, all the investments that I had that I considered stable are no longer stable. They, they dropped like 90%. Um, but right now I'm, I'm playing around, but it's more like index funds and it's more like looking into, uh, just, just, Again, it's a guessing game, right? Like no, no one's a hundred percent. You're not betting on a particular horse, though. No, and it's it's like, sure, I can invest in this company and hopefully they survive. But at the same time, you're like, okay, what I consider risky before is a lot riskier now. Like if I invest in a startup now, for right. instance, um, in whatever, uh, and and it tanks and it goes under because they don't have the clients there's my money. Right. So, so I definitely would not be investing in startups right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing that like a lot of my friends have talked to me about, uh, about investing. And a lot of people have talked to me about like what my thoughts are. And I'm like, if you have money to spare, spend it yeah. right on investing. If you don't, if you need that money for rent, if you need that money for, for, for your livelihood, don't, because you don't know Given the way the economy is going right now, you don't know if you're going to have a job in a month. You don't know if you're going to have income coming in and you might really have needed that money. Right. Right. So if you have the ability to spend thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, ten thousand, whatever in the markets, go for it. Right. Right. Because it'll most likely if you if you uh, if you invest in the right thing. Nobody hold us accountable here. This is not legal investment but <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get so much hate mail after this oh, dude, like, I'm, I lost I'm, everything i'm about to weigh in too so don't worry don't worry yeah. <laughs> but if you if you have the money realistically invest in in funds rather than this is my suggestion again yeah not not an expert in this whatsoever but i didn't invest in uh funds rather than individual stocks because that way you can get a diverse portfolio uh pretty easily and you can not guarantee but you have a higher chance of getting good returns on you can spread out the risk definitely yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. spread out the risk between like you like yeah 500 companies or whatever so i'm 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 a completely different philosophy where i'm betting on like uh individual horses so to speak okay okay Uh, but but there's no right or wrong that's just it like index look at the history of an index fund Mm -hmm. you're gonna be just fine (laughs) It's, it's sound advice. Something I, I want to lay around for anyone, uh, for anyone listening is you had, you had said you have investments that are now not so stable. People got to remember you haven't lost money unless you sell. Mm-hmm. And that's something that when I say that to someone, they're kind of like they process and they're like, Oh yeah. It's like, yeah, your portfolio might be down like 50, 60% right now. As long as you don't hit that sell button, you haven't lost any money. So just hold right now. The unfortunate part, like, like you were saying is, if there is job loss and things like that, and people need to pull out that money, yeah, then unfortunately it's going to be a loss and that's going to sting. But uh, I think I think the I think the big moral of the story is don't spend money you need, you you might need. Um, mm-hmm. If you got money you don't need, 
yeah, now's the time to probably dive in, right? Even if it is, yeah. even if it is an index fund or something like, you are gonna win. It's just yeah. a foregone conclusion. You're 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 gonna win. So, I, I just want. I'm curious. I, I didn't mean to take it that route, but I was like, wait a minute. I got I got the guy that could probably weigh in on this. So this. Is, <laughs> now back to the fun stuff that I. <laughs> After that depressing talk about the economy collapsing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It it depends on what side of the coin you are. Like, c- call me. Uh, color me. Um, color me cynical, but uh, yeah. it's been like Christmas Day for me. The. Uh, not obviously the what's happening to people, but like from an economical standpoint and being yeah. uh, a trader, um, yeah. it's it's like Christmas. It's like walking mm-hmm. into the store and realizing that everything's ninety percent off, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find credit cards at this point. Kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm very anti debt, as everyone knows. But uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely going all in. So I'm going to ask you a question that is almost like asking a parent what their favorite kid is, uh, or which, which which child they like best. Of all the posts you've ever done, do you have a favorite since you've started this? Oh, favorite. So one that was like maybe fun to make or one that has a funny story behind it that we would never know that always what kind of warms your heart or. So there's one that will like, there's one that pops into my head the second you ask that question. Excellent. And it's, and it's, there's one picture and you have to scroll deep for this. Like this is like, Oh, we will. Don't you worry. <laughs> that was like taking notes. 500 posts ago. Yeah. Um, but it was the one where we have me sitting and then Carm came and sat on my lap eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> and I the only reason... Sorry? I don't remember this one. Yeah. It was, it was so weird because like I'm literally just taking my normal picture and he comes out of nowhere. He has a bowl of cereal in hand sits on my lap and stares at the camera and I'm just like I can't I can't keep a straight face and Alex yelling at me to keep a straight face and I'm like I can't I can't just take the picture just accept it and I'm like I don't understand why this is happening yep. I don't understand why he decided to do this <laughs> and he has like a full mouth of cereal in the picture and it just every time I see the picture it it makes me laugh okay. and it just reminds me of the kind of relationship me and Carm have okay. right um, so that, that's probably the one that like triggers me the most in my head. That, and obviously the PSL ones are just the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always going to be a hit. It's funny. I get, I get at fall time, I get excited for two things, the actual PSL and mm-hmm. what you're going to do next. So, <laughs> like, like, my wife, I tell Kirst, I'm like, where is it? Why hasn't he posted it yet? So it's uh, I think one year. I'm just not going to do it to throw people off. Yeah. I think I messaged you one time. I was like, where is it? Like, come on, let's go. <laughs> Just like people have asked on, I don't know if you ever watched Friends, the sitcom. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a huge mm-hmm. fanatic. But uh, I, this question was very, very similar because they've been asked a hundred times. So when you're taking those photos, is there actually coffee in the cup or is it empty? It's empty. It's, it's completely empty. Uh, but it's the caramel secret. You know when you ask something and you have instant regret, you're like, no. Yeah, I'm like, why? Well, but so many people have asked me and every time I'm just like, no, it's empty. But the one thing that I'll caveat this with yeah. is that I have had that coffee like right. very recently. That's, that's the thing is like, we take these pictures, but the reality is, is that, because like, not to like burst anyone's bubble, but Instagram is staged. Like, it's always staged, um, but what I try to do is I try to have that coffee and then write about it, right? Like I'll have that coffee in the morning, write about it during that day, um, and that's usually what I do, right? Um, so no, in the picture itself, there's no coffee, but uh, sometimes there is. Like it, it's happened like three or four times where out of the like 700 posts that I have, three or four times where there was actual coffee in there. Um, but the reality is no. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, pulling back the curtain there for us. Yeah, that, that's why so, I'm here. So September 1st, 2016 was post one. We went to that. That's crazy. So four mm-hmm. years ago, you're having fun. Another four years? It depends. It really depends. It depends on where I'm at in my life at that point. Like in four years, I'll be 34. Right. Um, And (laughs) no, but like, I'm thinking about, I'm like, what will I be doing at 34? Like, I I don't know. Right. Um, Alfred holding baby. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Honestly, at that point, I it's, uh, let's let's hope that's not the case. But <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it has nothing to do with baby. Like again, to clarify, I don't trust myself with children. Like that's right. that's all it is because I am a child in and of itself. Uh, what were you saying, baby hater? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't like. I don't know. I don't know if if Instagram is gone by that point. Um, that might change things if if uh like i'd hope to i'd be happy to keep doing this for another four years i love coffee i love reviewing coffee i love like building that community um so yeah i'd love to but it just there's so many variables right so we'll see we'll see what four years bring awesome yeah. well, this is a lot of fun for anyone that isn't familiar with your content obviously where um what's the instagram handle and is there anywhere else we can find you so I'm on Instagram is Alfred drinking coffee, one word. Um, and then I'm also on Twitter, um, at Alfred Zag. Um, I have my website, uh, alfreddrinking.com and Facebook as well. I'm on there, it's, but the main, the main source is Instagram. We'll make sure we link them all up. That's awesome. Thank you. Alfred, this is a lot of fun, man. It's uh, I've got a tiny little bit left and, uh, cheers. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> what? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it was great, man. It was great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.